In this episode, we're going to demonstrate UEFI BIOS configuration. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to more of the hands-on PC build. This is an exciting episode that we have for you today. Uh, and that's because, well, we've powered on our system. Uh, and uh, we are going to get in and uh, we're going to configure our UEFI BIOS. Now, you might see that we've got a couple of things on our workbench that haven't been on there in the past episodes. Uh, one, I have my MacBook on uh, the, the desk right now, too, because we have to visit a vendor's website. And uh, we can't do that from this machine yet. Uh, and the other thing that you might know notice is that we've got a wired keyboard and mouse. In our peripheral episode, one of the things that we showed you is connecting a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse to the USB ports on the back of the computer. Well, that's great, but we don't have an operating system installed. So in order to work with our computer in its uh, UEFI BIOS configuration, uh, we actually have to have a wired keyboard. So temporarily, we're going to use the wired keyboard just for those purposes so that we can get the initial configurations done. Uh, and then later on, we're going to show you how to get those Logitech drivers installed in your operating system so that you can, well, you can get rid of some of the rat's nest on the back of your computer. So let's go ahead and take a look. We've powered on our system, and we're actually in the BIOS interface. Very exciting. I love the modern UEFI BIOS. Now, uh, what you're seeing here is that BIOS interface. And since we don't have an operating system installed, the first time you power on your computer, it's going to show you this interface. However, remember that every vendor is slightly different. And one of the things that you might run into is you have a keyboard shortcut that you have to press to get into the BIOS. Now, uh, with us, all we had to do is power on our computer, and we see this interface. And we've got some really good information here, and we can see that our, uh, our entire system is functional and operating the way it should be. Uh, so as, uh, as it stands right now, we've got a very successful build here. You can see that we have some motherboard information. We've got a BIOS revision, uh, as well as the CPU and the amount of RAM that's installed. Uh, this interface is what's known as easy mode. There's also an advanced mode that we'll talk about coming up in a second. Uh, we're going to come back to the information that we see right here and talk a little bit more about it because that's going to be the part that's really the configuration uh, in this episode. But you're going to notice that we have our CPU operating frequency as well as our memory uh, frequencies and what it's operating at, as well as the CPU temperature, the system temp, uh, and then you can see the voltages for the CPU and you can see the voltages for the memory. And likewise, our platform controller hub, what the operational temperature is right now. And notice these uh, MOS, these are our uh, metal oxide semiconductors here. This is the voltage regulator modules. And they're in the operational ranges that they should be. You can see uh, uh, your voltage regulator modules could go anywhere from 80 to 100 uh, degrees Celsius. If you have high performance uh, computing machine, you can see it go up to 120 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, you want to definitely pay attention to these voltages and compare, uh, uh, consult the uh, vendor documentation because in higher performance machines, uh, if these voltages go, uh, like for instance, if your PCH platform controller hub goes uh, above 70, you might get some performance degrade uh, degradation. You might uh, also see the same thing if your uh, VRM uh, um, temperatures go higher than they should. You might have to upgrade to a liquid cooling system or maybe even if uh, just upgrade your cooling system in general. Keep in mind uh, that we kind of already did that with this machine. We didn't go to a liquid cooling system, but we put an extra system fan in. Uh, so we're getting good operational uh, temperatures here, and we can also see uh, the output of the fans. We can see the CPU uh, fans and its current RPMs, as well as the system fans that we have. We didn't populate all four system header, uh, fan headers on the motherboard, so that's why this one is running uh, or uh, not running and says not applicable. So uh, that's what we expect to see. Uh, we can also see that we have our uh, solid state drive right here that it's being recognized in the appropriate sizes. We don't have anything populated in the PCIe slots. Uh, we didn't put an external graphics card uh, in there. I, I shouldn't say external graphics card. We're using the integrated graphics uh, that's built into the motherboard's functionality in the uh, CPU there. And we're not using the M2 drive, so we don't have either of the M2 drives that are uh, populated right now. So we're, uh, the BIOS is recognizing our solid state drive. Down here in the lower uh, left-hand uh, corner of the screen, you can see that we have um, our boot sequence. Uh, the only storage device, storage mechanism that we have in this computer is that solid state drive that we've talked about. Uh, so it, uh, it definitely uh, makes sense that it's, uh, for one, the very first thing in the boot sequence, and uh, two, the only thing that's being seen here. You can also see the memory status too. Uh, if you will, uh, if you remember back to uh, installing our system memory, we talked about uh, this is a dual channel 
uh, memory architecture, and uh, we had uh, channel one and channel two, and those were slots A and B. Uh, we had channel two here, A2 and B2. Uh, so again, channels one and channels two, and we populated uh, channel two, that being the A2 position and the B2 position, and those were two 8-gig sticks at 2666 uh, when it comes to the megahertz, and you can see that they are being read properly. So we are up and running, and this system is running uh, very well right now. Uh, now, I do want to kind of come back to this information that we're talking about right here. Notice that it's telling me what the BIOS version is. This is important information, but in this easy mode interface, uh, it's not giving us enough information. And, and what I want to do is switch over to the advanced mode and talk a little bit more about some of the information that I also want to kind of glean out of the UEFI BIOS interface here. Uh, and we can do that a couple different ways. This has got a nice point and click menu. Uh, I could do the mouse click if you want, if I wanted to, uh, advanced mode, uh, or I could just uh, push F2 on my keyboard which I did. Uh, it's one of the reasons, again, remember that we have the wired keyboard here. So uh, the USB interfaces are typically turned on and recognized by your firmware platform without an operating system being installed. Now, um, you'll notice, let's go ahead, let me go ahead and get back into advanced mode just by pressing F2. Uh, and we'll see right here that in the upper left-hand corner, we get a little bit more information than just the BIOS uh, version of F9. Uh, notice that it tells us what the date is that this revision or version of the BIOS was released. And we can see 10-15-2019, as well as the identifier to that BIOS as well. Now, that's important information because one of the first things you have to do when you are going to start up your computers, you have to make sure that your firmware is up to date. Uh, a lot of times they patch uh, little system flaws or bugs in the code. Sometimes it gives exp uh, expanded functionality. Sometimes it'll be a security patch for some kind of security vulnerability. So we need to take that information. And what we need to do is we need to hop on over, browse on over to Gigabyte. In this case, that's the vendor, the vendor's website. And we need to compare that against the information that they have for this motherboard and determine, do we have the most current version of uh, of the firmware. So if we hop on over to my Mac uh, OS over here, I've actually got Gigabyte's website pulled up already, and we've got the version of the motherboard, and it's ready to go. And what we need to do is we need to get into, uh, and, and you, again, every interface could be a little bit different, but uh, you could see support, you could see drivers, you could see downloads. I've definitely seen different versions of that. But what we're looking for is support right here. And when we click support, you're going to notice that it tells us that we got a bunch of downloads and we got some drivers for the operating system. That's great, but we don't have an operating system installed. So we're really just looking at stuff for the hardware at this point. Now, we will have to download these when we get our operating system installed, and we're going to do that in another episode. So what I'm looking for is somewhere in this category, we should see, or in these different categories, we should see that we have um, a BIOS uh, uh, section. And I can see down here, second up from the bottom, that we have a BIOS plus seven. That lets me know that there's probably seven entries in here, and we can click on that, expand that out. And what I want to do is I want to compare that information with what we seen earlier when we were looking at the BIOS interface. Notice that F9, that version is here, and I want you to also notice that the date is the same thing that we seen in the BIOS interface. That lets me know what version I have. But if we scroll just above that, you're going to see that there is a next, uh, another version. And it was actually released right in the mid of December uh, 2019. So what we need to do is we need to download that revision, that version of the BIOS interface. And I keep saying revision version. Again, they might vendors, different vendors might use different um, terms. Uh, but it's the version uh, of BIOS. And this is the more current version that we need. And you can also see uh, what some of the things I was telling you that it allows you to do. It enhances the RAID ACI compatibility, fixes some of the uh, behavior for your uh, vCore and your CPU power behavior. And so they talk about some of the, rec uh, some of the workarounds uh, to improve the stability for the DDR4 um, 2666. And again, that's on some specific memory chip suppliers. Our crucial memory that we installed, you've seen in the BIOS interface that its frequencies were recognized and its voltages were in the tolerated ranges. So that doesn't apply specifically to this memory, but a lot of those other functionality fixes do. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this 
and you'll see that it's a little zipped file here uh, down in the lower portion of my screen. And we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is I've got a USB thumb drive installed on my Mac and we're going to format that USB thumb drive and we're going to bring that uh, zipped file we're going to unzip it and bring that over to the thumb drive, and then we're going to plug that into our PC, uh, and we're going to update or flash the BIOS. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to close out of my web browser. We're, go we're good with that. And you'll notice that I've got this... Uh, this USB thumb drive plugged in, and it says data file, uh, and I need to format this, and I need to format this in a file system that this computer, this PC, is going to recognize, uh, and typically, you're going to want to do this in FAT32, so I'm going to uh, launch up the disk utility here. Let me show you that. So the disk utility, I'm going to go ahead and launch that up. If you're in Windows, this would be disk management. If you're doing this from a Windows machine, you'd probably be doing this with something like uh, disk management. Uh, and you'll notice that my data file, uh, data file USB drive, right, uh, is right here. And um, it looks like, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure. Let's see, what is, it, what is the file system that it says on this? Okay, well, it does. Uh, it, it, oh, there is. It's FAT32. I'm going to go ahead and format it anyways, uh, just to make sure that we have a nice, clean USB drive to uh, bring over these firmware uh, uh, files. Now, you'll notice that I'm going to go ahead and make sure leave it the uh, MS-DOS FAT. That's FAT32. And I'm going to call this firmware just for uh, my own purposes there. It doesn't really matter. The, the name's kind of arbitrary here. And I'm going to choose Erase. We'll see it unmount it, format the drive, and then you'll notice that it remounts the drive and we should be ready to go. All right, so that has this uh, uh, format of the USB drive is done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my finder on my Mac and we're gonna search for that download. Uh, here is the BIOS download right here. And notice we have the MB BIOS, and it tells me what uh, the version of the motherboard is here. I'm just going to double-click that. What it's going to do is it's going to unarchive it or unzip it, if you will. And all we're going to do is turn around and drag that over to this USB device and drop it right into the USB device. Uh, now, once that's done, I'm going to double-check by uh, clicking on the USB device just to make sure that those files are there. And we're kind of just open them up. And yes, I can see a bat file there, an exe. Uh, so it looks like those files are copied over. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eject the, the USB drive from my Mac. So I'm just going to right click on it and choose eject. In this case, the name of it, firmware, you're going to see that it disappears. Now, at this point, I'm pretty much done with my Mac. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and try to remove this from the a little adapter I have, and I'm just going to shut my Mac down here. We can get that out of the way because we don't need this. Um, now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to plug this into the USB uh, um, ports that are on the front of the PC. These are where the front panel uh, uh, connectors that connect to the motherboard, that's what they're operating through right here. Now, if we go back into our BIOS interface, there's a couple of different places that I want you to pay attention. Notice that if I choose F8, there's this Q flash, and this is from the advanced view. If you happen to be in the easy mode, and I'm just going to hit F2 to get back into easy mode, it's also on the same, um, it's on easy mode too. And you'll notice Q flash. It's a utility that allows us to update or flash the BIOS basically updating uh, the firmware platform. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit F8. Uh, and there's a couple of options that we have here. Notice there's update the BIOS, but there's also save BIOS. I want you to be aware that you should, if they offer you the ability to back up your old BIOS configuration, do that. Because if anything goes wrong with the BIOS update, you can always revert it to the older BIOS uh, in its original state and then figure out what went wrong. If it happens to be a USB thumb drive that's maybe not doing too well, you can restore it to the earlier version, then re-download it and try the uh, process again. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Save BIOS. Uh, and it's asking me to name this. I'm just going to name it F9 uh, because I'm very creative like that. <laughs> We're going to name it the revision of the BIOS. Uh, we'll call it BIOS, and then I'm just going to type in Backup. And again, names here uh, basically are arbitrary, but this is just going to let me know that, hey, that's what this is. That's what's on this USB thumb drive. Hit enter, and you're going to notice that it's just going to go through the process of taking the code that's in the ROM chip 
and backing it up to this USB um, thumb drive that we have plugged into the machine. Now this could take a little bit of time. It might not take that much time at all. All right, but it does look like we are done. And now it's time to go ahead and update our BIOS. So I'm gonna hit enter and that's gonna bring us into this screen here. And then we're just gonna select the update BIOS here. And when we select that, it should find a directory. And we can see on the left-hand side, there is a directory. And if I click that, it's gonna expand that directory out. And the, the actual file that we want is this one right here. And we're gonna select that. Notice that it highlights it in yellow here. And we're gonna choose the right arrow. And it's asking me to confirm, do you really wanna do this? Remember that if you have lightning storms going on, uh, you don't want this process to be interrupted. So uh, if you happen to maybe be on a backup battery supply, you know, maybe a UPS or something, uh, you want to ensure that you're not going to get uh, any kind of a electrical interruption while you do this process and don't interrupt it. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And you're going to see it's verifying the file. And what it does is it goes ahead and it, it checks the integrity of it it says, yes, this file is valid, and all we have to do uh, is go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that this process could take a little while. One of the things to keep in mind is that when ROM chips, uh, when you're reading from a ROM chip, uh, that typically happens a little bit faster sometimes than actually writing to the ROM chip. Uh, notice that when we were backing up that file, it really didn't take too long. But now that we are actually you know, um, installing or updating, flashing the BIOS, those inf the, uh, instructions are actually being written to the ROM chip. So this can take just a little bit to get done. Uh, be patient with it, let it take its time. We're gonna use the magic of TV and when we come back, our BIOS should be updated. And through the magic of TV, probably didn't take too long for you. It was a few minutes for us on the other end. Um, but one of the things you're gonna notice is that the USB drive is actually taking out. Once your firmware gets updated, it's gonna reboot your machine. And it, for us, it happened automatically. Uh, and what you don't wanna happen is leave the USB drive in, to, uh, in the USB port as it reboots, because then it's gonna try to load an operating system from there. And you might get a, 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 a invalid boot disk type error, it's fine, it'll say press any key to continue. Just pull out the USB device, press a key on your keyboard, and it's gonna reboot the system for you. And ours has done that, so we can see if we look in our BIOS here, notice that uh, the information that we have up here at the top, notice the revision of the BIOS, the version of the BIOS. Notice that it now says F10C. Uh, However, I still wanna get into the advanced mode by pressing F2 and um, make sure that we go over to our system information here. And notice in our system information under the model name, yes, we see the F10C, uh, and we also see that date that we expected to see that was also uh, what we seen on the vendor website. So this essentially is how you can confirm that all of your hardware is recognized and operational in your computer post PC build, and also how you configure your BIOS. More, more importantly, making sure that the firmware is updated in your system and you're ready to go when you decide to install your operating system. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.